Hey, what's up guys? Uh, I wanted to make a quick video about how to set up properly for your virtual piano lessons. I know that it can be kind of confusing with where you should put your phone or where you should put your laptop. Uh, should you use lights? Should you use a microphone? Headphones? Uh, so I want to go ahead and answer those questions. Uh, come with me so we can take a look at the best way to set up for your lessons. There's some items that you might need for your remote piano lessons, such as a microphone or headphones. You could use earbuds. Uh, you could use wireless Bluetooth headphones. And you'll need a cell phone or a laptop for the actual video. I'll start by saying that you can take virtual piano lessons without a microphone or headphones, but you're the quality of your lessons may suffer, and that's not something that we want to be doing. We don't want to be paying for our piano lessons and maybe not hearing very clearly what the teacher's doing or the teacher's not hearing what you're doing, um, not being able to see properly what's going on. It's, it's a little bit of a waste. So what we're trying to do is to get the correct tools so we can have the best possible experience for our lessons, uh, for our instruction. If you're using a cell phone, then you're, you're going to be limited to the microphone on the cell phone and the speakers on the cell phone. So if you're, if you're just, you know, have your cell phone set up like this, um, the, the sound coming from your teacher's lesson is going to come out of the speakers, but it's also going to get picked up by the microphone. They may actually hear this, the same things that they're teaching you, that they're saying, that they're playing to you. And for you, I mean, you're, you're, the quality that your teacher is going to be able to judge and determine is only as good as the microphone on your on your phone. So that's something to keep in mind if you are going to use a phone for your lessons. Uh, but you have a similar problem if you're going to be doing a laptop, right? Because you have just a small line for the speakers on your computer and a little microphone, usually at the top where the camera is. Um, and so again, your the quality of your lesson is going to be limited to how good that camera is or that microphone or those speakers are and the problem is if if your teacher's playing something and and it's coming out the speakers and it's getting picked up by the microphone it can cause a little bit of interference so one very easy solution uh, to get rid of part of that is just to use headphones because then you don't have to worry about the sound coming out of the speakers from your laptop or the sound coming out of the speakers from your headphones i could use um, the sound coming out of the speakers from your from your phone if I, if I plug headphones into my phone, now I don't have that problem. Same thing with my computer because I'm not using a physical space for the sound to carry through. I'm just coming straight through my headphones. So that's the first thing and it's a very easy correction for your virtual experience, right? Um, the other thing is sometimes during lessons there is a lot of ambient noise, dissonant noise, background noise, whatever you're going to call it, that's going to get in the way of the teacher being able to hear you properly. So if you're using a mic like this and it's the middle of summer and you have the AC on, the fans are going, it might be hard to hear the piano properly just because, you know, you're, the mic on, on your phone or the mic on your computer is not going to be uh, that high of a quality microphone. Now, I'm not saying you need to go and get something like this and get a whole setup with an interface but you may want to consider getting a USB microphone, something like this. Uh, you just plug this directly into the computer. There's no, there's no other devices. There's no interface that you use. It's plug and play, USB microphone. There's a whole bunch of different ones on the market, but I'm a big fan of this particular brand, and I'll, I'll leave a description. So if you get a, a microphone, now you have options of like, how much gain do you want on the microphone, which is, you know, how sensitive do you want the microphone to be to pick up lots of noise, a little bit of noise. Uh, you, can, you can position the microphone. You could put it closer to the piano, further away from the piano. It gives you so much more control over the quality of the sound that you're going to be providing to your teacher, to your instructor. Uh, obviously, this is all kind of, you know, with the assumption that your teacher is doing all of this uh, already. I mean, for my lessons, I, I hook up microphones. I have microphones in the piano. I've got multiple cameras, so I'm, you know, I'm doing that. But that's more of the expectation for the teacher. The student, at the very least, needs to have clean sound and decent visuals so the teacher can see and hear what they're doing. If you're gonna use your phone, you can use it in the corner of your piano. It'll actually stand up just right there, and the angle will capture both the keys and you playing. So it's actually an ideal position to place your phone. If you're going to use a keyboard and you don't have a corner on the piano, 
my recommendation is to buy a ring light. These are also very affordable, very common. You can get them on Amazon or just about anywhere. And this will hold your phone for you and give you light. And you can set it up right next to your keyboard. You need to make sure that if you're using a laptop, you're setting it at a height that allows for the camera on the laptop to see you and the piano keys. Make sure it's not too low uh, because then you're not going to be able to show anything. If it is uh, being mounted on a chair or something and it's not high enough, you can use some books. That's one little trick. You should be able to clearly see yourself and the piano keys so your instructor knows what you're doing. One thing that I recommend is using a tripod stand. These are also very easy to get and they are adjustable in height. So if you get one of these, this will take care of the issue of height. You could also look at something like a TV dinner stand. Even something as simple as that uh, is very easy to set up next to the piano or the keyboard. Make sure you have proper lighting in your lesson space so your teacher can see you and the keyboard. Try not to be in a in a space that is super dark. If you're using a microphone like the Yeti, uh, this is a USB microphone. You just plug it into your computer and uh, it's very easy to set up. All right, so this is actually a pretty good setup right here. I've got a platform for the laptop that's raised to the appropriate height. Um, the, the laptop is actually tilted a little bit towards me and the piano and the camera, I'm making sure that I'm not gonna have this open the way that we typically do where it's kind of aiming up. You wanna have it aiming pretty much straight or even just a little bit down because you need the angle of the camera to get all of the piano keys and you playing. You don't want it to be just your hands. You wanna show yourself also so your, your teacher can kind of see what you're doing. Where are you looking? Are you looking at your music? Are you looking at your hands? So they can get a, a good angle of everything that's going on. Also the microphone, you can try putting it on the piano, but sometimes the vibrations of the piano will travel through the microphone and it might actually cause a lot of distortion. Uh, if that's the problem, then just move the microphone onto a different platform, like the one that the laptop is on, for example. So this is a good setup right here. And uh, and yeah, I have plenty of light so that my, my instructor can see what I'm doing and I can, I can easily work through this setup. Okay, this also maybe goes without saying, but in order to have a good quality virtual lesson, you need to have good internet service, like a decent signal or a strong signal, and you wanna make sure that's not gonna get interrupted. So maybe don't have too many people streaming movies and downloading a bunch of stuff at the same time. Just be kind of conscious that the quality of your lesson is gonna depend on you having good uh, streaming service, good internet connection. And if you wanna make sure that your connection is extra tight, I might even suggest using an ethernet cable instead of just Wi-Fi. Because remember, you're sending real-time audio and real-time video, uh, so you wanna to try to have the strongest connection possible. Alright, so now you guys know how to set up properly for your piano lessons. Have at it, don't skip any steps, and tell your friends who are taking lessons. Your piano teachers like me will thank you so much for doing all of this. Um, good luck in your lessons, and I will see you next time. Bye.